Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy 1. This game holds a very special place in my heart, and that is pretty much what set me on the path of being a gamer. I played games like Mario Bros., Duck Hunt, and Tetris, and other titles like that, but it wasn't until I went to my friend's house and saw him playing this game that I realized video games can be so much more than just 10 or 15 minutes of mindless entertainment. Instead, this actually had a compelling storyline and required you to sit down in multiple sessions if you wanted to make any progress whatsoever, and ever since then, I've been hooked. I attempted to do a Let's Play of this way back in 2009. I didn't know a whole lot about Let's Playing back then, so it kind of turned out pretty crappy. I think I gave up after 7 or 8 episodes. The response was pretty bad, I definitely wasn't happy with how it was turning out. But now that I've actually gotten, you know, two Let's Plays under my belt, I feel as if I can go back and finally do this game the justice that it deserves, because this is really an awesome game that I think everyone should play. And uh, I'm going to be doing the Nintendo version as opposed to the PlayStation remake or the Game Boy Advance remake, just because this is where it all started. This is pretty much my career as a video game enthusiast. This is where it all began, and I wouldn't feel right playing it as a remake. And I know a lot more about this version than I do the other versions as well, so it should make for a more uh, entertaining and knowledgeable experience for you, the viewers. So without further ado, let's start this Let's Play. First thing you need to know, the respawn right down at the bottom kind of dictates how fast the battles will go. If you leave it at 1, they're going to be excruciatingly slow. Definitely don't recommend doing that. I did it once, and I never made that mistake again. Alternatively, you can go to 8, which makes the battles really, really fast. Uh, if you're playing by yourself and you just want to cruise along, definitely a viable option. I find it goes almost too fast for my liking. I, a lot of the time, I don't know what's going on, I'll miss something pretty important, and I don't like missing stuff. So I tend to uh, bump it down to 6 or 7. I think for this Let's Play, I'll leave it at 6, that way it's not too fast, not too slow. You, the viewers, will be able to see what the heck is going on, and so will I. So when you go to start a new game, you'll be faced with, the faced with the decision of picking your four party members. Be advised, this selection is permanent. Uh, if you want to make changes later on, you can't. The only way you can is if you start a new game. Which is pretty unfortunate, especially if you're halfway through the game and you realize you screwed yourself over. Uh, I should point out, there are a lot of different party options that you can choose. It really comes down to user preference, but... Uh, there are some game mechanics you need to keep in mind, which will definitely make things easier. I wish I would have known them when I first started playing, but uh, I've learned them throughout the years, and it definitely makes it uh, a more involving experience, because you know what the heck is going on. Uh, first thing you need to know, the character in the first position takes 50% of the enemy hits, whereas the character in the second position takes 25% of the hits, and then the last two characters take 12.5% each. So the character in the first position is definitely uh, the one that you want to have the most hit points and the best armor available, and that would be the fighter. So I'm going to start with a fighter, and I typically name them after myself. Not because I think I'm super strong or anything like that, but uh, I have red hair and I have a connection with the fighter that way. At this point, it really is your own preference. There is the thief, black belt, red mage, white mage, and black mage. Or you can have another fighter if you want, but uh, I'm not going to go that route. The Thief, you need to keep in mind this version is severely underpowered. It's not until way, way later on in the game when you get the class upgrade that it actually becomes a decent option. But at that point, you've already gone through a lot of the harder dungeons, so I don't think it's a good class to pick. I'm, I'm going to skip over it altogether. Uh, it, it is good for running away from enemies if you think you're going to be doing that, but uh, I'm not going to you know, rely on that. Another thing to point out in this game is that magic is also severely underpowered. The intelligence stat is bugged, it doesn't have any effect on the damage that you do with your magic spells, so a red mage can use black and white magic spells as effectively as a white and black mage, which is kind of interesting. Red mages also have the added ability that they can use some pretty good weapons, and they also have access to some pretty good armor. So I like to use a black, or rather a red mage, as my secondary character, because they can be a good tank, they can do some pretty good melee damage, and they can also use spells when needed. And I'm going to name this character... Lexa. And my third character, I'm going to pick a black belt. They start out pretty slow, but they can do some pretty insane damage later on. And uh, I always have one in my party, it seems. I'm going to name it after Pancake, the Bulbasaur. 
And uh, even though I kind of went on that spiel about how magic is really underleveled in this game, I'm gonna go with White Mage just because if you don't have a dedicated healer in this game, you're gonna find yourself having a really, really hard time just because the other healing options in terms of items are really... They're okay early on, but later on, definitely tedious to use, and if you don't have a White Mage, or even a Red Mage for that matter, uh, it's going to be an incredibly difficult adventure for you. But uh, I'm pretty happy with this party, it should turn out pretty good. Hopefully nothing too catastrophic happens. I'm not doing any sort of challenges, I'm not doing like, uh, if your characters die or whatnot, they're gone for good. I'm just going to, you know, keep it original as intended. And uh, as you'll see, you start out in the middle of nowhere, and you have no weapons, you have no armor, so you'll need to pick up some later. But we're going to start out by going into this castle here, and finding out what the heck is going on. Normally when I played through this game, I didn't really talk to the NPCs, and I had no idea what was going on, I just kind of wander about and figure out stuff on my own. But in this Let's Play, I'm not going to do that, I'm actually going to make an attempt to figure out what's going on by talking to the NPCs, that way it'll make more sense for you. So apparently we're the Light Warriors and the King is looking for us, so let's talk to the King. And apparently Garland has kidnapped the Princess and we have to help her. Which is kind of a cliche storyline, but you have to keep in mind, this game came out in the late 80s, so this was actually a pretty original idea. And I remember when I was playing it, I was like, oh yeah, we gotta see the Princess, I've, I've never heard about this before. Uh, I didn't actually say that, but... <laughs> Uh, according to this guy, Garland holds the princess in a temple to the northwest, which is good to know. And I don't think there's anything over here. No, okay. So let's leave the castle and make some preparations in terms of equipment. Because right now, you definitely don't want to get into a, a random encounter at this point. Uh, your, knuckle, your knuckles won't be doing very much damage. So we go over to this town. This is Corneria. This is the first starting town. And uh, I guess I'll give a little tour and explain some of the mechanics of towns in general. The end is where you want to go to heal up your hit points and your magic spell charges, and it's also the place where you save your game. Uh, there are a fixed amount of gold in terms of how much you have to pay for each inn, but uh, as you progress through the game, inns become more and more expensive, so if you don't mind making a little bit of traveling arrangements to go back to a previous inn and save some money, uh, that's definitely something you need to keep in mind. If you come over here, we have the weapon shop, so let's buy some equipment. At this point in the game, the Rapier is the best weapon for the Fighter and the Red Mage, so we'll pick up one for each of them. And for the Black Belt, you want to pick up some Wooden Nunchucks. And for the White Mage, strangely enough, they don't use staffs, they actually use hammers in this game. I don't know why, but uh, we'll just go with it. If you're having a Black Mage in your party at this point, you can either choose between the Wooden Staff or the Small Knife. Uh, the wooden staff has a little bit more damage to it, whereas the small knife has better hit percentage. Hit percentage doesn't really play that much of a role this early on, so I'm not going to explain too much, but uh, later on I will. So pick the wooden staff if you have a black mage. Over here we have the armor store, so let's pick up some armor. Uh, the red mage, like the fighter, can use the chainmail, which is awesome, because they can uh, absorb some pretty good damage early on. Uh, the black belt can use the wooden armor. I don't recommend using it. Uh, same for the white mage who can use cloth. They do erase your absorb stat by a little bit, but it also reduces your evade stat by a lot more. And at this point in the game, the minimal increases in absorb are definitely not worth the huge decrease in evade. So I'm going to forego um, armor for those two right now. Uh, over here we have the magic shops. The one on the left is a black magic store, and the one on the right is for white magic. Uh, first things first, I'm going to pick up some white magic for hope. In terms of spells, you can only have three spells for each level, so as you can see these are level 1 spells, so you can only choose three of them. Uh, fortunately, some of them are better than others. Definitely want to pick up Cure, because this is our only means of healing people at this point. Harm is an interesting spell in that it does damage to undent creatures, and it, it targets all of them, and it does pretty good damage actually, and later on this is actually a really useful spell for clearing out a lot of weaker undead enemies. I'm definitely going to pick it up later on when I have some more gold, but uh, I'm going to hold it up for now. Fog raises the absorb of all your party members by a little bit. It's not too important. I'm probably going to skip over it. And then Ruse um, raises the evasion of the caster, which is... It's good if you're doing like a soul challenge or four white mages, but uh, 
If you have a balanced party like myself, Ruse isn't that useful, so I'm going to skip it. Uh, next up we have Black Magic. A little bit more useful spells here. Fire is pretty much the number one spell I get, and uh, it does pretty good damage. There's also Lit, which is also known as Lightning. I want to pick up that later on. Uh, sleep is pretty good for putting enemies to sleep so they can attack you. And Lock... I don't remember too much about Lock. I don't know if it's bugged or it's just useless. But uh, I don't think I'm going to pick that up. And what else is there to show off in this town? Oh, what do you have to say? Well, yes, I am the Light Warriors. Uh, if I come over here, this is the clinic. This is where you bring your dead characters and they can be revived for a, a certain fee. Uh, try not to let your characters die. I'm going to try not to because... Uh, not that it's expensive to raise your characters back from the dead, it's just that if you're stuck in a dungeon and then you lose a character or two, it makes things so much more difficult to get out and get back to a town and uh, yeah, I've had a lot of bad experiences with that. Down here we have the item shop. This is where you can buy you know, healing potions, you can buy pures which cure poison, uh, later on you can buy softs which cure stone, you can also buy uh, tents, cabins, and houses. What these do is, you can use them in the field and they restore hit points to all your characters and they also provide you a chance to save your game. So uh, they're a little bit expensive, but you definitely want to pick up some up, pick some up later on. But now that we're done in the town, we can uh, equip our characters. And interestingly enough, every character has their own inventory for weapons and armor. They can each hold four, but they can use one weapon, obviously. And uh, they don't have a shared inventory, which is kind of annoying, especially when you go through some of the later dungeons and you're finding a bunch of different weapons left and right, and then you have no room to carry them. So you have to leave them behind, or drop them. And same thing for armor, except with armor you can get like helmets, shields, gauntlets, so you pretty much take up all your armor slots. So if you find something new out in the field, uh, you have to drop something or just forget about it, which is kind of annoying. And, as you can see, our magic is already there. And this is where the spell charges come into play. As you can see, it says 2 of 2. So we can use cure 2 times, and only 2 times. And the only way to restore your charges is to go back to an inn. Later on, when you buy houses, they do restore your spell charges, but that's not until later on. So don't count on that. And, uh, interestingly enough, I forgot to point this out, but black belts have an interesting mechanic in that their absorb when not wearing armor is always equal to their level. So when your black belt is level 1, their absorb will be level 1. When it's level 2, it will be level 2. But the caveat to that is the game won't automatically update it to 2 when you level up. The only way it'll do that is if you go to the armor screen, that's when the game will check and then it'll set the, uh, the absorb to 2. So keep that in mind if you're using a black belt without any armor, such as myself. I think at this point, uh, we'll get into a random encounter, I'll show off the kind of battle mechanics. And I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show off a battle every time I come across a new character, and then I'm going to cut out those battles. Or not new character, a new enemy rather. Just because I don't think people want to watch a lot of random battles. And uh, in terms of fighting options, you know, you have the basic ones, you can fight, you can run, you can use magic, you can drink, healing potions, and you can also use your equipment. Uh, not really important at this point, but later on you'll get certain equipment items that uh, they have special abilities attached to them. So like the heal staff, if you use it in battle, it'll cast heal on your characters. Which is pretty useful, because then it doesn't count towards spell charges. So keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that auto-targeting does not exist in this game. So if you set all your characters to attack one imp, and then you kill it on the first hit, the rest of your characters are just going to attack blindly and, and miss you know, the, the dark space. So you want to split up your character's attacks, and it takes a little bit of getting used to knowing how much damage your characters can do, what they're capable of. See, I wasn't anticipating my white mage to be able to kill in one hit, so I kind of paired him up with Pancake, but uh, it takes getting used to. You'll figure it out as you go along, especially when you come across new enemies, you won't know what's going on. But as you can see, since there was no enemy where I selected to attack with Pancake, it was just an ineffective attack, which is kind of annoying. And I'm glad they fixed that later on with the uh, other Final Fantasies. And uh, I should point out, in this game, there's going to be a lot of misses. I don't know why they designed the game this way, but uh, it just happens. It's not until later on that you're, you're hitting consistently. 
But as you can see, we got some gold, we got some experience points, and we're pretty much equipped to the point where we can go take on Garland. But I think we're going to do that in the next episode. Let's play Final Fantasy. Uh, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks.